Brennan Mulligan is an absolute savage in this most recent season of Dimension 20's Never After. Basically, this season's a hardcore D&D with a bunch of different rules that we're gonna get in and break down, but the setting is a fairy tale horror. And don't worry, there is no spoilers here. I'm not gonna talk about any of the story beats or anything like that. I'm gonna talk about general things and talk about the mechanics. Because I have talked to Brennan, he's a great guy, but he is brutal in this campaign and I love to see it. If you haven't been here before, I'm the Dungeon Coach and on this channel, I break down outside the box ideas, the homebrew your games, to add some extra spice to it in the way that you want. And I have my own TTRPG that I'm working on and developing that's also pretty hardcore, but in this video we're breaking down four different hardcore rules from Never After. See which ones you like and don't like, share the video with your players, let's get into it. The first rule up is the death blow rule, and just that word sounds super awesome and the mechanic is super crazy. And disclaimer before using any of these, talk to your players if you're going to run a run, a hardcore campaign where people can die at any moment, you also should probably set up some things as far as a backup characters, etc., which that's a whole nother topic we can get into if this video does well. I might talk about how to prepare for, because I'm running one myself with a Curse of Stroud campaign. I had players get ready their second characters. But here's the full death blow mechanic in all of its glory, because it's never specifically stated till much later in the season what exactly is going on under the hood here. Again, no spoilers for the story, but this is the full mechanic. Whenever you roll a natural 20, getting a crit in combat, the opponent has to make a death blow save. The DC of this save works just like a concentration check, which is 10 or half the damage that you took from the crit, whichever's higher. And in the case of a critical strike in this way, it's usually gonna be half of the damage you take. So if you took 30 damage, the DC would be half of that, so 15. But if you took something like 44 damage, then the DC's 22, you see what I'm saying? And here's the crazy part. If you fail this DC, you could die. That's wild, because keep in mind, enemies do this to players and players do this to enemies. But we'll talk about the implications here in a second, because it's not as simple as that. If you fail, you die. That's what I thought it was at first, but after watching all the way through, here's how it really works. Let's say for the sake of this example, you attack somebody with a natural 20 crit and you deal 40 damage. Half of that is 20. So the DC would be 20 for them to succeed at this save. So if they roll a 20 or higher, they succeed. Oh. Whew. If they fail, they take that damage again at the top of the PC's next round. So they take essentially double damage from the crit, which is already double. So how it would work is that creature that I hit for 40 damage, if they fail the save, whenever my turn comes back around the next time, at the top of my turn, they take 40 damage again. But, 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 if they fail the save by five or more, they instantly die. And that's huge. So basically how it works is the DC 20 to take that damage again and a DC 15 to instantly die. And this happens multiple times where Brennan will lay it out there because it is a great job of setting the tension of the stakes of what this role is about to be. This means they take double damage again. This means they die instantly. So 20, they save whatever. Between, so 19 all the way to you know, through 15, that pocket right there means they will take that damage again at the top of your next turn. But if they fail that 15, which fails by five, so they get a 14, they failed it by five, oh my gosh they die. And the same thing could happen to the players. So it creates a lot of tension. And the mechanics of this really amped up the tension of players di possibly dying from this. Again, not going to get into if this ever happened on whatever side or whatever, but man, oh man, is that crazy when you get crit. So if I am the dungeon master and I crit a player, there's a chance they could instantly die, which is terrifying for the players. But if you flip it around and you're a player now and there's the boss and you're fighting the boss and you natural 20 crit the boss, you could be a hero right now and land the death blow. Time out because man, oh man, me and Brennan are so synced up on this. I've talked with Brennan and he's actually gonna be talking with me about DC 20 RPG pretty soon, which is the TTRPG that I'm releasing. And in DC 20 RPG, we do have a lot of buy five stuff. Buy fives on the way up, buy fives on the way down. And I love it and it fits perfectly into this mechanic here. Cause these buy five saves lets a failure mean something bad, but even worse means something worse. So I love that and I love breaking down these videos on Dimension 20. I love what's going on there and if you guys are interested and if you haven't seen what's going on yet the ravening war is just releasing right now i am watching it right after i film this video i'm gonna be watching it if you guys want me to make videos on the ravening war and do some breakdowns on different things about mechanics or different moves different plays stuff like that let me know I haven't done a dc breakdown series in a while so i might fire that back up and if you're interested in dc 20 rpg as a game system link for that is down in the description all patrons get early access to it that i'm about to be releasing in about a month all right now let's get back to these scary rules this next one here is probably the one that came up the most often as far as all of these very hardcore tension setting difficulty rules here is if you ever take more than half of your total health and damage you take a hit that's so bad that you lose over half of your current 
hit points. We'll get into that in a second. You have to make a constitution saving throw. If you fail that save, you get a level of exhaustion added to your character, and that's one level, and that keeps going. Two levels, three levels, and it keeps getting worse. So running through a quick example on this. Let's say you have 40 health. If you have 40 health and you get hit for 20 damage, that's half of your health, and you have to make a constitution saving throw, or you get exhausted, right? Or one level of exhaustion. Now you have 20 health. Now your maximum is still 40, yes, but if you are at 20 health, if you get hit for 10 damage, that's half of your current health, right? Because you have 20 current hit points of the 40 total, right? So if you are at 20 and you get hit for 10, that's another constitution saving throw. And 10 damage is not that hard to take. That's actually you know, decently low, depending on the level of as you get higher. But now you're at 10 health. If you get hit for five damage, that's half of your current hit point. You see what I'm saying? So if you're at eight health and you get hit for four, constitution saving throw or you're exhausted i also really love this in general because it fixes a big problem in dungeons and dragons health and healing economy which is something i'm trying to fix with my game is wanting to stay at high health because <laughs> if you're at low health you could take smaller hits and actually need possible exhaustion saving throws and all this kind of stuff but if you can stay healthy then you you aren't going to have to make those saves as often so i really like that now this can get very snowbally which is also the very scary part about this whole thing because if you get low and things are bad then it's actually it has a higher chance to get even worse especially as oh uh, now i have two stacks of exhaustion and then Ooh. So careful on implementing this one because this one came up, I would say, the most in general across watching the entire se season. And also, as a side note to that, and even maybe the whole point, you should really go watch this season of Never Had. This is not sponsored in any way. I absolutely love Dimension 20 and I've seen every single thing that they've put out. I'm super excited for the Ravening War. So regardless, if you guys want to see a breakdown of it, I'm going to watch that whole thing. Uh, it's super awesome. I will put the link down to, into the to drop drop out. Uh, you have to go watch uh, and drop out. It's a subscription based thing. You can watch it or you can wait for a while and they do post on their YouTube channel a while after. Third rule here is called shots, but I've never seen it done in this way. And it's absolutely beautifully done in a really cool way that really got me thinking. Cause I have done called shots. I use it at my table. I have a whole book of expansion of fifth edition where I have called shots in there, but I've never seen it done like this. Here's how it works. There's a fight at some point, being very vague here in this uh, campaign where there is a specific thing they're trying to hit on a specific creature. And they're trying to hit a spot, an eyeball, a small thing. Maybe it's a gem on a golem, an item, and whatever, whatever this thing is. And you can implement this on any hard thing to hit on an enemy for some sort of massive benefit that you would get from doing this thing, right? However big of a, uh, however much importance you want to put on. You could have the creature die if they are going to succeed on this called shot, which stay with me just one second. Uh, or you could have it lose a big ability, or you could have, there's tons of different ways to implement this. But here's the called shot. If you want to hit this specific spot, you have to first have advantage on your roll. You can't even try and do this unless you have advantage on your shot or your attack or your spell or whatever. You have to have advantage on the roll you're trying to make to hit this thing. And then if you have advantage, and this is the brilliant part, you can choose to give yourself disadvantage instead. And then if you hit, you have hit that small tiny spot. I don't know, I just really love the idea of this because the, the strategy of having to try and get advantage in the first place to put yourself into a position was brilliant. And seeing the actual fight play out, teamwork, I just got chills, nerd chills from the teamwork that had to happen and different ways that people could give each other advantage, help action became super important, whatever things you can do to yourself to give yourself advantage. These are really big things to be able to set yourself up for success. That alone, that half of the mechanic is great and brilliant and adds to a lot of tactical setup. And then once you've set up your advantage, <laughs> You then throw it out the window and give yourself disadvantage to try and make that shot. And if you hit, oh man, oh man. Super epic tension to build that thing up. Super epic tension to see if the disadvantage hits, which is hard to do. Absolutely loved it. I've already added it in my game for Strahd himself. Creating Curse of Strahd. Strahd himself, there's a mechanic. I don't want to get into that because my players might watch this video. But there's a mechanic having to do with that where you have to set yourself up to do this thing to be able to... And the fourth rule here is something I'm throwing in here because I really think that this is important. If you are running a game that has so many levels of death to it. In my Curse of Strahd game, death saves don't reset. I have a, a videos I've done on death saves and a, a bunch of different stuff of how to make the game harder. These are four, these are uh, the three I just said were brand new ways to kind of rack, drach it up the tension. But if you do have these things in place and the chances of a PC dying is actually 
decently high in this way, then you really need to make sure that you give them a proper send off moment. Again, I could do a whole video about this concept of how to prepare things in what you need to do to run a high hardcore campaign. There's a lot of things you need to have at the ground level and you need to set your players up for expectations, all this other kind of stuff. I mean, because I'm currently doing it right now. So again, let me know in the comments if you want that specific video, but you want to give them a send off in this moment when, and this is in general, this is anytime a, a character dies in the game. I love to give them a final words, a send off. Of what does your character do in the last final breath? You can go as far as to give the player one final action. I've done that before where a player, they, they, they fall and they die and they stand, they have one final turn and they make their turn and then they, if they fall, it was epic. It was beautiful. It fit the scenario. It was a moment, the thing I made on the judgment call on the fly where I'm like, you, you stand up and you have one final and they're like, oh, and so they were able to do this thing and help out everything and then say their last words until they fall and hit the ground dead. Or don't let them have any mechanics to it. Let it be completely no turn or anything like that. They just have a role play moment where they're fading in and out of consciousness. When I run death and dying and making death saves, I don't rule it as they're just completely unconscious. They can't, they're not doing anything. I rule it as they're kind of like teetering back and forth. So if three death saves are made and the character is done, they do have that final moment of that final thing, what is your final words? What do you say? What do you do in your final moments? Or if the death is absolutely massive and huge and it doesn't make sense for them to be on this teetering situation and they are absolutely gone, then you have a moment where they have some sort of vision or have some sort of spirit where their spirit comes out of their body and they have a moment to do something. Let them be able to say goodbye to their character on their terms and let them be able to say their final words of what they see and what kind of happens. I have prepared already a look, a paragraph of flavor text type thing to really set the tone of any, if any player dies in my Curse of Strahd campaign, then I know what's going to happen. I know it's going to look like they're going to see these certain things around them. are going to have a chance to do or say something and they're going to be able to do something. Whether it be role play, mechanics or anything, they're going to have a moment to say goodbye to their character, giving them a proper send off, which leads me to my send off here to you guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the hardcore rules here. If you want to see more on the Ravening War, let me know. You want to see more on how to run hardcore campaigns? Let me know. If you want to see more on DC 20, check it out down in the description because, oh baby, we're, we're working. We're working. So stay creative. Think outside the box. Peace.